Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. So, guys, this uh, we want to share some info we've been getting from the guides this morning as we uh, did our own uh, ozone treatments this morning. And Cindy was on the elliptical machine. The guides were coming through about oxygen therapy. They're coming through about... Uh, you understand why people are bigger and live longer, healthier lives in other ages. You know, there's a lot of different reasons, but there's one thing that um, I don't think we've talked directly about it, but it makes all the sense in the world, honestly. You know, when you see these uh, trails in the sky, there's multiple, multiple purposes. There's many, many, many different purposes for these. They're, they're doing uh, a variety of different things. And, you know, one of the things that is not natural is our environment right now. It's, it's completely engineered. Our environment is totally engineered. And the reality is in a golden age, it's natural. And also in the silver age, for the better part, it is much more natural than engineered. And here we are just getting out of the Dark Age, starting to go into the Bronze Age. And we're just starting to wake up and realize things. So, you know, the cycle of the Yugas is, is such a key critical concept to understand. They are consciousness cycles. Yes, consciousness cycles. And we've talked about before how... You know, in different yugas, like right now, the average human is between five and six feet tall, pretty much. But if we look in the Bronze Age, we, we are larger. And we look in the Silver Age, we are literally larger. Our bodies are physically bigger. And in a Golden Age, our bodies are even bigger yet. Why is that? Well, part of it is the fact that the system is all about keeping us as weak, as fragile, uh, as unenergetic, as handicapped as possible. So as we free ourselves from the system, we're able to grow and expand. Now, you, you've heard and we've talked about um, the different lifespans in the in the yugas. And it's interesting, too, because it's, it's echoed not just in the Sanskrit Hindu tradition, but in, in the Greek traditions as well, as they talk about the golden ages. They talk about... A time before Zeus. Now Zeus and the Greek gods there, they are equated with the system. They are equated with uh, the draconian controllers, the Anunnaki, uh, the EGG, etc. So when you're talking about Kronos and you're talking about the, the Titans and the Titanic forces, they are forces of nature. And in fact, you know, you could equate L, if we're talking biblical, you could say that where they're talking about L in the Bible, they're kind of talking about the natural system. And then you see Yahweh supplanting L. That's like Zeus supplanting Kronos. And you're, you're referencing different things as, as the wording changed, the intentions changed, as the takeover of the planet happened. So this went. Humans did not have to work to feed themselves. The earth provided food in abundance, and we lived to a very old age. We actually almost had to choose when we wanted to leave an incarnation because we didn't die uh, easily, naturally. In fact, they give us ages of 100,000 years. Being able to live in a physical body in one life for 100,000 years in the Silver Age, 10,000. In the Bronze Age, 1,000. Now, the Bronze Age is equating to the age of the patriarchs in the Bible. And when we look to those Sumerian kings list of tens of thousands of years, you're, you're looking farther back in time. And again, it is a jumbled mess on purpose. This is what the controllers do. They think they've weaved a web that we can never escape from. We can never see the truth, but, but we can. We just have to have patience and look closely. So what is different in these ages? Well, part of it is simply uh, our atmosphere. As you look at this annoying thing there. Do hyperbaric chambers work? Absolutely. Yes, they they do work. They work very well. And um, it's just something that I, I it's, it's not widely 
known because they don't need us well you know when it comes to oxygen therapy ozone therapy we we don't talk a lot about it because so many of our videos i mean just us barely touching on things like fasting they've been taken down for medical misinformation but those of you who do uh, work with us we, we do talk about it and we are actually affiliates with one of the programs so this is something when you have uh when you have your oxygen and you have blood and you have circulation good circulation healing is bound to occur it's going to happen oxygen is like water it, it's so very important and as we get older we slow down a little bit it really makes our our organs and our processes they slow down too why because we're not able to bring in and pull in the oxygen and have the same circulation as we used to so in that sense aging is a very natural process but is there something we can do about it? Is, it? is there something we can do to make that process a little less painful? So many of you that we that we work on um, are a little bit older. And yes, it's, it's painful. It's not easy. Um, but there are other things that can be done besides the Western um, medicine. Yeah, absolutely. And some people will say, but my parents, for for instance, <clears throat> and my grandparents, you know, they didn't live as long. But but right now we're actually seeing a reversal of life expectancy because of the system itself. But the the reality is we would be naturally living much, much longer if it wasn't for the system. Much, much, much longer. It's not because of the system that life expectancy increased over the last hundred years. It's because we're leaving the dark age. And it's it's due in some ways to a natural change in the climate. Oh, wait a minute. Climate change. They're harping about climate change. Yes, you know why they don't want climate change? Because they don't want us living longer. And that is a reality. You know, everything that they do is about stopping the natural order of things. And so the guide said, because I, I still do watch uh, MMA, um, it's, it's, it's one of perhaps my only guilty pleasures uh, that I'm still kind of in this world. So they said, you know, uh, as, as I have uh, heard of different fighters talking about uh, getting oxygen treatments for recovery and, and being amazed at how they don't get tired and they're able to come right back and and go into another big um, competition just literally two weeks after a different competition oxygen is key and what happens in a warming climate and and we could look through the cycles of this planet now the time frames that they give us are, are not accurate and here you see an article from fizz.org Rise of dinosaurs linked to increasing oxygen levels. Why were the dinosaurs so big? Why were they so big? Why was everything so big? It's because there was more oxygen. It's just that simple. The oxygen levels of the planet were were much higher. And, you know, this is a byproduct in some ways. It goes hand in hand with the actual warming of the planet. Some have made note and say, you know, here here we are terrified of warming. But the reality is a colder planet provides less food. A warmer planet will provide more food. Yes, you will lose areas uh, that are around the current coastlines because, yes, uh, sea level will rise. Yet the land that's there will be more productive, more productive with increased oxygen levels and more plant life. And why are they always cutting down trees? Remember that with uh, Gil Bates cutting down trees? Because trees, you know, basically take what we exhale and they exhale what we need. It's a beautiful, beautiful system. You wonder why are they cutting down the lungs of the world down there in the Amazon? Because they don't want us being healthy and they don't want us living long. If we live too long, we'll figure out that something's not right. And this is why they shorten the lives intentionally. So, yeah, you, you can't have anything that big living on the oxygen that we have in this environment. But again, this is why things lasted and lived uh, so much longer. We lived so much longer in the other yugas, and we were bigger. This is also part of the reason why 
you know, they've demonized giants. And yes, there were giants of a very, very aggressive, hostile nature. But just look also at what we have going on right now with the nonstop warfare. You know, if you get attacked constantly and, and there's somebody's trying to exterminate you, yeah, absolutely, you will fight back. This is just a natural order of things. So as the system came in, they eradicated all the different beings that were living on this planet. There were many different extraterrestrial species that came here and settled here. And one by one, they were wiping them out in one way or another. And, and this is just part of our hidden history. But what we're heading into is ultimately, as, as Cindy has remote viewed, and even as short ahead as 2100, she sees that where we are uh, now and where we were <clears throat> when we were living uh, in on the Texas uh, area, Texas border area with uh, Arkansas, that it looks very, very tropical. It looks more tropical than it is now. In fact, it feels more like you're maybe more in Central America because ultimately uh, that's what's going to happen. Yes, the climate is going to warm up. Uh, you know, you're going to end up having, and this is something that truly, this is where I was personally um, going down a, uh, I wasn't seeing the picture clearly until the guides came through in these times. Yeah, there are going to be areas that are going to be, uh, some areas will be a little colder. There's going to be um, changes going on that are artificial first before we get to the natural uh, being unimpededly taking over, I should say. The natural at some point will not be impeded and distorted like it is now as they lose control over the entirety of the planet they will still have their um their own sheep in their own little pens the cell cities the smart cities the 15 minute cities but that won't be the entirety of the planet and in fact as far as space goes it'll be the minority of the planet as the planet is shifting away from uh, the control of the darks, the, the dark side, so to speak, into uh, at first a period in which there will be absolutely a, a real duality going on of people that are very free, uh, starting to learn how to truly live in harmony with nature. And nature will become more abundant because that abundance has been purposefully uh mitigated and taken away from us there would be a natural abundance again you know nowadays you go to the store what do you find if, if you're looking for a watermelon seedless watermelon everywhere yeah you can't you can't turn that one watermelon into a thousand but with the heirloom you literally could turn that one watermelon into hundreds if not a thousand of watermelons this is how abundant the planet naturally is. You you will do not have to slave away working in order to feed yourself. The climate will get much more manageable. And this is, in fact, what happens in, in the uh, golden and the silver age. It really, truly it becomes a paradise here on Earth. Mm -hmm. Nature is so extremely amazing. And we look at these dark ages, these Kali Yugas and the cycle, and it's almost like some kind of a game for them because they do try to come over and overtake nature so that this AI dragon that I have seen it wants to be source but you can see nature always finds a way you can put you know 10 feet of concrete over something and then it's only a matter of time before you're going to see a dandelion break through that thing and start a crack and begin to grow nature always finds a way and you can see even if they take all the seeds away it only takes one seed from an heirloom to replenish so so much so try they might try they may try they will it's just it's not going to succeed nature is too abundant it's too great and and that's something that we have right now that we can all really uh, sink our hearts into and take heart and know that no matter how dark it gets there's always a silver lining 
nature finds a way all we need to do is be embedded and be in balance with nature and things will flourish absolutely <clears throat> so you know doing things like qigong why does qigong work well we're consciously telling our body to take the life force in but the other thing that we're doing is every breath when we're doing a qigong class and like this class is a full hour that's a lot of oxygen intake and can you imagine how effective that would be in like a silver or golden age i mean literally doing a class that's an hour could end up probably expanding your life by months one simple class this is again part of what they don't want people understanding because qigong does work and now we're heading out of the dark age into the bronze it's going to be more effective it's going to be much more effective the earth will uh, help us heal in fact you know the guides were saying again in, in those ages it, it's almost like you got to say okay you know i want to kind of give up the body now i want to do something different and that's exactly what is um written in in the greek mythologies yeah you know, we live to a very old age but with a youthful appearance and eventually they died peacefully as if falling asleep their spirits were said to live on as guardians of the mortals because that's exactly what we do that's the spirit guide or you might take it to be an angel again you know the whole concepts all these concepts we get from the controllers uh religious perspective are are really erroneous uh, angels are, are non-embodied beings. And in fact, any of us can take a position as an angelic being, you know, guiding from a different density, a higher density. So, you know, there's so much distortion. But the reality is, again, it's, it's like in, in the golden age, you just got to choose. Hey, you know, I had enough of this. So just like certain yogis and monks can do now they will go into a meditative state and they will willingly leave their body just because they're done with this life they're done with this incarnation they've achieved what they want to wanted to achieve and maybe they want to go incarnate somewhere uh in sirius or in octorius or in andromeda they want something different and because again we're consciousness and so that whole thought of who created you well you know again they've they've genetically modified our bodies but nobody created you y you are again an eternal being your consciousness that is uncreated unborn and eternal and and that's your your true nature a lot of people really when they come to this world they they want answers in a scientific way they want to know things like okay when did the earth start you know or when when did consciousness start they need some sort of a starting period they need an ending period they need timelines and we are deliberately put in these bodies where our understanding is limited but it's limited in a way where we are constantly searching so we are always always expanding but it's very much in the human nature to need, want, desire, answers. And the problem with that is, I'm not saying it's wrong to have answers. Answers are great. But if you're going to look at science with its limited technology and its limitations that are in a box, those are not the answers that's going to fit in the, the human body and the 3D realm that's been created for us. It's time for us to expand and reach further, look harder, ask more questions, find another way. Yeah, and just again to reiterate, when they give you these time frames of the dinosaurs 66 million years ago, the earth wasn't the earth. You know, at that time it was Tiamat and the earth was outside of Mars's orbit because it was Tiamat and Tiamat was outside of Mars's orbit where the asteroid belt is. So, you know, this, this is a distortion. This is, again, more of the controller's lies and manipulations. Uh, it, it's a big reveal, you know, and it's a lot to take in to realize that everything we were brought up with uh, is a distortion. But when you look at 
the environment of the earth just just a little while ago relatively speaking we're not talking 248 million years ago no we're we're talking in thousands of years uh thousands of years ago again they brought the moon in about 12,000 years ago 11,700 12,000 years ago they brought the moon in and put it in place to keep the orbit tilted at that 23 and a half degree tilt yes and this really can create problems right now but keep in mind nature finds a way she will regain balance and you know this is this is really curious information too because this is how i discovered uh, vedic astrology i was one who i didn't bother with astrology because nothing fit i mean absolutely nothing fit when i was looking at it from a western standpoint a western point of view and i'm not saying western is wrong i think it does work for many people but when i started getting into vedic astrology it was so so fun because all of a sudden all the pieces started to fit and this is something that's brought from a golden age it is very scientific they do the calculations uh, adding in the 23.5 degree tilt whereas western starts everything at zero degrees and i'm like that makes all the difference in the world, does it not? 23.5 degrees and you're dealing with a, a, an entire planet. That's a lot of change. So then I started to study Vedic astrology. And yes, I've cried many, many, many nights because I couldn't get it. It is so difficult to learn. But I kept going and I kept going and I kept going. And, you know, one person after the next, I, I would just keep going. I would keep doing my best, keep adding in whatever I could add in and fill in whatever I, I could remember and just keep going over it and over it and over it. It's when you're dyslexic, it's almost like in this 3D world, you have to memorize everything. And, and that's really, really difficult. So with my di dyslexia, actually, it turned out to not be so bad because now I'm able to channel the charts more than anything. I'm able to give people information based on their soul or their soul fragmentation and help people understand like if there's a a, a problem in, in your life there might be a culprit a planetary culprit that we can adjust and there's things we can do in the 3d to maybe help that so it's been quite a journey and we just keep finding more and more answers because we continue to search and i know so many of you guys are searching as well yeah and this, again, we go into the spiritual side of things deeper on Heart's Home. For those that are brave enough to go down that path and have their um, preconceptions and indoctrinations over, overturned, as they start to realize, wow, that was just another PSYOP. Yeah, it was another PSYOP. And so as we're making this, I'm thinking this is more of an evolutionary because I want to reach thousands instead of a few hundred. Um <clears throat> and and again, you know, uh, I've ordered and have books that uh, and have read about this for 40 years, pretty much, you know, as my own journey started, really, uh, when my brother died when I was five years old, I needed to have answers. And I, I just I remember as a little kid praying, I got to know all the answers. I just want to know all the answers before I pass on. And they give me Cindy. <laughs> it, and I mean, it was Cindy is the biggest blessing that I could ever ask for in this life, and and I cherish her more than anything in this world. And you know, it's it's just uh, amazing to think about it because here I am teamed up with somebody that is uh, an amazing channel, and has these abilities. And my entire life, I've been just studying and reading book after book after book, and, and I you still do. And I still do. I still do, you know, because it gives me questions. And then we go and we confer with the guides. And you know, it, it is fun to uh, have our full trance channel and hear the familiar voices of the Galactic Federation come through. Uh, voices that I know very well. I know from outside of this life and this incarnation, as they do feel more like home uh, than certainly than anything I listen to on YouTube besides some beautiful music every now and then. But yeah, absolutely. Many people spoke of a time before the moon. And again, there's been many races of giants. Not all giants were bad. In fact, we were the giants, the, the souls that are inhabiting the bodies 
of human beings right now on this planet, many of those souls inhabited bodies of giants, giants that were exterminated by those that conquered this uh, planet and imposed their, their system. So they created the seasons. The planet was tilted through their cataclysms, the Younger Dryas event, multiple impacts. When you look to uh, the Sumerian books, it talks about Enlil deciding that there's too many humans. Enlil, uh, the Anunnaki uh, god of the air, so to speak. Too many humans, we got to reduce the population. And what are we expecting? There are many people that have had visions of three asteroids, three uh, what they take to be asteroids, coming in and impacting. In fact, the guides have, have agreed, yes, there are three things that will impact at some time in the future on this current timeline. Doesn't mean they're natural asteroids. Doesn't mean that they couldn't be uh, otherwise and in fact be some form of warfare. But in fact, you know, part of that warfare may just be using what we might uh, term as tractor beams to move asteroids into an uh, orbit that's going to bring them a into a collision with the Earth. As this is exactly what they do. They love to take what looks to be natural, but it's not. I mean, it, it, it's artificially induced. This, the Earth, Earth's tilt is artificially induced, and the moon keeps it locked into place. If the moon wasn't there, the earth would straighten herself and we would have an eternal spring on this planet, so to speak. And right away, you know, oxygen levels would increase as, as everything would have a much more stable environment and the plant life would be abundant and, you know, O2 levels would increase, human lifespan would increase, our consciousness would increase, more O2, more thinking clearly, this is another big part of why they spray with barium and aluminum, why you have Alzheimer's, why there's things in those ouchies that are, again, going to make you dull, why there's fluoride in your water. This is the big reveal. You know, you've been under extraterrestrial control the entire time. This whole planet has been artificially um, constructed with an environment, with an environment that makes life harder, harsher. And it's even said in the Bible, uh, you know, God limits, well, if you really want to translate it, Yahweh limits human life at 120 years max. Because, you know, again, that's, that's what the controllers do. Keep people dying quick enough so that they can't have the time to figure out what's going on. So, you know, I wanted to share this with you guys. So at the same time, the guides were... Uh, again, reiterating, um, you know, we can, there's a lot of treatments that they will tell you, oh, that's just woo-woo. Well, no, it's not woo-woo. What's woo-woo is, is the status quo, is the mainstream. Because, you know, they also, the mainstream thought that full frontal lobotomies would work. The mainstream thought that leeches would help. Uh, the mainstream, you know, thought it was okay to put mercury in hats so it seeps into your brain and, yeah, in your mouth, in your teeth, so that, again, seep into your brains. No, this system is all about limiting our lifespan and keeping us dumb and dull. And so it views us as slaves, as we've said with the Koran. Allah created humans. Well, you know, again... They didn't create us. Our soul is eternal, and, and the soul is unborn and uncreated. And so they, they, they can't claim ownership of that, but they did genetically downgrade the body, and that's their idea of creation. The Garden of Eden time, when everything is abundant, is a reference to the original state of things. Everything is abundant. It's, it's the takeover of the system that that leads to the downfall of humanity, the shortened lifespan. So again, those people that, that look at um, all giants uh, as being bad, and that's why the Israelites went and exterminated the Canaanites, you know, this is happening again right now. And, you know, it, it, it's just going to keep going unless we wake up to the ignorance. <laughs> This is us exterminating ourselves because they're manipulating us to do that. 
we need to wake up to the bigger picture. And so the, the Quran and the Bible are, are two of their very main tools in all this. If you really want to go down a spiritual path, you have to look into the Western mystery traditions. Uh, you could look yeah, the Tao Te Ching, absolutely learn and, and read and study some of the Hindu holy books because they talk about the wars of the gods. Yeah, you know, there's so many different um, paths to go down that give you true spirituality. Uh, the Yoga Sutras uh, are another one, the Shiva Sutras. The Bhagavad um, Gita is good. Uh, all the different Puranas. I mean, these these explore consciousness itself, and consciousness itself is what we are. It, it's not going down as so and so begat so and so and begat so and so. You know, again, if you really look at it, they're, they're really um, it's all about giving you this system that makes you think that uh, because a human ancestor bit into an apple, this is why everything is wrong. It, it could not be any more silly. It's time to, to wake up and, and really realize the manipulation that's going on, which, you know, thankfully it is happening right now. And that's a blessing. It is inevitable. Absolutely inevitable. And they understand that. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, I do see the, the Bible and the Quran now is one of the biggest psyops on the planet, but it was created just for that. So these extraterrestrials have done a very good job. Do I think it's bad that people gather at church on Sundays? No, absolutely not. I think people do need to gather together. They do need to be spiritual. They need to search their soul. That's We are spiritual beings. We should do all of these things. But I don't think anyone person or any one religion should look down upon or belittle another spiritual context because it doesn't level up to what they deemed important you know when it comes to spirituality people are celebrating the one they are celebrating the creator of all what they deem to be the creator of all and there is no one system that's on top of the other and if there is a system saying i'm the only one everything else is just junk that needs to be looked at because that keeps us so separated absolutely fundamentalism is their greatest tool because again that's how the witches were burned that's how the giants were killed and that's how this uh, society is being set up to destroy itself at, right now as we see it so as always guys we uh invite you to subscribe over at patreon as well and for more deeper insight make sure you're subscribed to all three channels much love source bless and namaste namaste